while, while we were working on the war primer, we spent a little time in at Brecht's archive in Berlin, which is an amazing place. Um, and the curator there showed us this object that really struck us. It was Brecht's Bible. And um, the Bible, we really kind of caught our attention because this is a photograph of the cover. It had, he had taken a newspaper clipping of a, of a racing car, which I think he'd got from Time magazine or Life or one of those picture magazines, and he'd stuck it on the cover. And inside he had um, annotated parts of the Bible, and it wasn't really um, anything to do with the Bible. He really was using it as a spare paper, it was like a notebook, but he had obviously run out of paper, and so he was using the Bible to take notes. And this was done um, during a period that he was in, in exile. He was traveling in um, Scandinavia and in America. Um, it was the same period that he was working on the war climate. And um, we, we thought it would be interesting, again, to, it's, it's a kind of homage and a kind of um, vandalization of his work, um, which is uh, probably the best approach to Brecht. Um, and he would probably applaud that. Uh, we decided to, well, it inspired us to create our own illustrated Bible. And of course, there's, there's a long tradition of illustrated Bibles, but we decided um, that our pictures would actually sit over the text as a kind of um, kind of aggressive um, in, in an aggressive relationship with the text, um, and we began. Um, I mean, this this project kind of came out of a few different strands in our research. The one was uh, Brecht, you know, this the subject of Brecht. The other was we started working with an Israeli philosopher called Adi Ophir, who's written a book called Divine Violence, um, which is only avail available in, in Hebrew, but he. There was a small part of it that he translated for us. And it's a remarkable book because he really kind of rewrites the meaning of the Bible, particularly the Old Testament. And he points at the Bible as a kind of metaphor or a parable for the growth of modern government. And he talks about how in the story of the Bible, terrible things happen, um, terrible catastrophes take place. There are victims of these catastrophes. And in the beginning, nobody really knows what they've done wrong. Um, why are they are the victims of these horrific actions and and, and then gradually what happens is you get the story of the Ten Commandments and you get the, the the invention of the idea of law and then you have a relationship between law and punishment and so he looks he looks at the Bible as this extraordinary kind of prelude to the idea of government and the relationship between photography um, catastrophe and state power and with the, with those thoughts in our mind we kind of began to read the Bible and tried to kind of extract parts of the text that somehow related to those themes. Um, and the last kind of piece of the puzzle was we started working with the Archive of Modern Conflict, which is, if, if you don't know, is a really interesting archive based in London. It's called the Archive of Modern Conflict, but it doesn't necessarily stick to its brief of, of conflict. It kind of goes in lots of directions, which is a lovely thing about it, and it's probably the most 19th century sort of um, archive you could imagine. It's, um, it's absolutely vast, and um, Adam and I went into this place with the idea that we would look at all the pictures and then decide which ones we wanted to use, but each day the door would open and more pictures would come in, and it was this kind of Borghesian kind of impossible task. And so we began the process of reading the Bible, underscoring certain parts of the text, and matching them up with um, with the images that we were finding. I mean, the problem is we were going through, so we, we, we probably went through about 10,000 images by the end of it, and took a really grim summer to read the, the Old and New Testament, underlining, as Ali said, words that, that were somehow pertinent or resonated with Adiophia's um, central tenet. Um, <coughs> And it was a very strange and, 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 and crazy time matching these things up. And, and there's, one, there's one kind of conceptual gesture that kind of lightens the whole project, which is, I don't know if you know, but on every page of the Bible, there's the words, and it came to pass, which is almost like this in a silent film, you get meanwhile. Um, and it, 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 it's part of idea first thing, which is, you know, take it. It's true, right? And, and there was one shelf in, in the AMC, the Archive of Modern Conflict, that was just full of magic tricks. 
And so every time we had the, uh, it came to pass, we would have a magic trick in there. Um, there were some, obviously, more grim ones. And while Ali says it's a very 19th century archive, I'd also argue it's a very 21st century archive because they've been brave enough to acquire um, collections of images that nobody else has would dare touch. For example, an obvious one is a shelf full of private Nazi soldiers' albums. And these show very tender images of fathers saying goodbye to their children and their lovers and their wives and being very tender to each other and washing together and playing together. And they just totally confront certainly the notion I was brought up with, which was these kind of very regimented choreographed <coughs> automatons, you know, which explained the way a kind of narrative to me. And this really challenged it. Another archive that illustrates it is um, there was, there was a, uh, a bunch of pictures that came out of the ghetto of Woj which showed a very upper middle class um, section of Jews having very lavish dinners, parties in fur coats with very well fed pets and huge tables full of food almost the day before they were, they were, they were trained out, shipped out to the death camps. And that for, for years went around to all the Jewish archives and nobody wanted to acquire it because again it complicated what needs to be a simple narrative for most people. And the AMC were brave enough to acquire it and publish it as a book. And so I think it's kind of very forward thinking in that way and we try to explore that as, as, as much as possible. Again, like the war primer, I think, again, for us, it isn't where we come from and our concerns. The meta-narrative ultimately is about photography. Photography sees itself as a kind of so expansive, it's biblical in nature. It tries to, you know, encapsulate everything. Um, it's, it's, it's often parodied for that. And I think um, we were thinking about that all the time, about, and also how it's drawn to catastrophe. I was drawn to tragedy, I was drawn to violence. It's very difficult to read, but the underlying bit here is the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up together. And what you've got on the right is a, um, this images from Pearl Harbor, and on the left a more contemporary image from Japan. Life for life eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. All the instruments of ministry, the days of his separation, and it came to pass. The dream of dreams, His heart, his lust, make merchandise of her. With madness and blindness and astonishment at heart, and thou shalt, I'm struggling here, destroy all the inhabitants of the land before you. He smote off his head, and they cried. Play the madman with the edge of the sword in a mountain in the wilderness. There is war, and there and there they left their images. Bones, bones, the bones, bones, the bones. They looked, but there was none to say. <coughs> my lips, my mouth, my tongue. Thine eyes be open, <coughs> seek my face, and it came to pass. Deliver my soul from the lowest hell. On the side of their oppressors there was power, but they had no conformity. Better is the, is the end of thine than the beginning. Hmm, I'm struggling too. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, 
We actually had to get permission from Her Majesty the Queen to make this book because uh, it turned out that the King James version of the Bible belongs to her, and she still she still retains the copyright. So we got in touch with um, uh, Cambridge Press, who managed the copyright of the King James version, and they, after much deliberation, wrote us a letter to say we will not seek to impede your project. 